This video will show you how to make a green screen video effect. Green screens are essentially a masking technique. They're sometimes called green key, or even better, chroma key effects. Because you don't actually have to shoot with a green background. That's a green screen. Traditionally, uh, these chroma key effects have been filmed uh, in front of a green background because green has the highest, uh, it's called the relative luminosity of any of the three RGB channels. And so that's why in, in the older days they always used they always used green for the background because it was easier to separate uh, to separate the color. But let's say you are going to try to do a chroma key effect with Kermit the Frog and you want to isolate Kermit against a, against a background. Well, you probably wouldn't use green, would you? Because that's going to be hard to separate the background from, from the foreground in this case. What you would probably do then is use the complement of green or the nearest uh, primary channel that's a complement, which would be red. And this would you would use a red screen then if you wanted to create a chroma key effect for Kermit the Frog. So the green screen or chroma key technique is all about getting your original video to have as much color contrast between the subject and the background as possible. Let's see how it works. Let's see how this works in Premiere Pro. So I have a project here that I've already uh, set up, and in it I've got um, black video to start, then the uh, main title, then we're going to go to the title that I'm going green screen, that's set up, and then when that's done there'll be some, some random video playing. Let's go back and uh, kind of look at the individual pieces here. Um, this first layer of video that I have is called black video. This is something that uh, is pretty useful to you. A lot of times you just want some black screen in there and if you want to add that you do it through your project pane here. And so you scroll down to your uh, project pane and you say add new item. And under that one of the options is black video. And then the only thing is you need to know what your uh, what your screen size is that you're working with on this particular project. You set it to that uh, that screen size and then you hit OK and you've got just a black video segment that you can drop into the timeline anywhere you want it for as long or as, or as short as you want it. So that's that's just a good uh, little trick to know where, where to get that video at. I've also got the uh, now there's the main title, but I've also got the, the title effect here that I'm going to use set up. And this was done as a Photoshop file um, where you then import the, the different layers, add some sound, and you know, there's your title. Uh, if, you, if you haven't seen that or don't know how to do that, check out the, uh, the video that's on uh, splicing clips and, and adding titles. That'll show you how to do that particular technique. Okay, I've already imported my green screen video, which is here. You can see it's quite long, it's 47 seconds. Um, and then I've split it into the two subclips that I might want to work with, the first entrance and, and the second entrance. Um, to do that, you just simply uh, choose an in and an out point. So let's say this is my in point. And then... Isn't that special? And then if this is my out point, uh, if I want to save that as a separate clip, this is a good thing to do when you have a long clip that you're going to be taking different sections of it and inserting it at different points in the video. You just simply go into clip and say make subclip. So you can make as many different subclips out of a long clip as you want. And, and that's a little easier, I think, than, than editing them on the timeline. So what I'd like to do is take the first subclip that I made here, which is called First Entrance, select that, and I want to put it into the timeline 
right at the beginning of the title. And then I've already made some extra video, uh, video layers here. Make sure that I'm not using this one for anything. Yes. If you want to, to add video layers, click into this area of the layer. Hold down your control key, click, and then say add track. And you add as many tracks as you as you need here. All right, let's make this panel a little bigger. One of the joys of trying to edit video on a small laptop screen. And right here where the where this graphic starts. That's the first one. And then right where the hey ma check out my cool starts. That's where I want to place um, first entrance video. So let's just drag it onto the timeline right there and then we can see it runs about that long. In this case I'm going to extend these to the length of the green screen video. All right, now let's start editing this green screen video. Let's see what we have to work with. Let's drag this back, scrub it back to here. Okay, so what we want to do is get rid of this white area, and then we also want to get rid of the, the green back there. We're going to do this through our video effects, and we're going to go down to Transform first, and we're going to click Crop. And what we're going to do to, to put this special effect onto it, we click and drag the effect name onto the selected video clip. And then to see what we're working with here, we need to change from our source panel over here to the effect controls. So under our effect controls and our video effects, we're looking for crop. And what I want to do is move the left edge in. So I'm going to click on left. And where it says zero, I'm just going to start dragging it in until I've gotten rid of all of that white area. And that's going to crop off a little bit of the video. Uh, so I'm actually going to be entering from the frame and it'll, it'll look a little bit odd, but that's better than having the white area, I think, on the, on the video. You likely won't have to crop your uh, green screen video the way we filmed it because you're not moving across the frame and, and everything. Uh, you know, it's it's going to be easy enough to get rid of the, the green background. What you might want to do though is scale it or move yourself to a different position, and we're going to do that under this video effect motion. And you see here would be where we want to change the position. We can we can move it around. Uh, in this case, what I want to do is scale it. And I'm going to make this a little bit smaller so that I'm actually kind of walking and looking up at the title a little bit. Do something maybe about like that. To move it, I'll do that through the position here. And basically, I just once I've got it selected, double-clicked, uh, I can just click and move it down so that I'll be a little bit smaller. I might even scale this down a little bit more yet. Something like that, and then move the position down to the bottom. And when you when you go into this position uh, and the scaling, it's going to create a keyframe. And this is actually, if you wanted to move yourself around to different places in the video frame, uh, I'm not sure why you would, but, but you would just go along and create different keyframes at different points in time and then move it to these different positions. And that's how you can kind of create a sense of animation. Next, we want to uh, apply the masking to get rid of the green in the background here. And we're going to do this under our video effects and we're going to click on, we're done with the transform, we're going to click on the keying and under keying the one that we want is called the ultra key and so to apply this to the track we click and drag and place that onto the track. You see the, uh, uh, the little plus sign there, drop it on there and now we should be able to find the alt ultra here in our video effects. There it is, uh, the video effect there for the ultra key. Okay, now that, 
now what we're going to do, we've got the Ultra Key ready. What we want to do is, this is going to be a bit of a rough selection, but we want to sample the color using the eyedropper here under the key color command. Somewhere in about the where we feel is like a middle value. This is probably a little too bright, this is a little too dark. I'm going to go right about here. Like I said, this is going to be somewhat of a rough selection. I'll show you how to do a, a little finer selection in the next segment. And I click on that, and it's made its best guess of trying to sample that color and mask it and get rid of it. We can see a little bit of a haze uh, behind me there, but it's done a pretty good job on a first selection there. And that's with the default setting for the composite output. Uh, if we want to try a more, uh, a little stronger one, we can try to the ag aggressive setting, and that gets it a little bit better. Um, we can also look here at the alpha channel to kind of see it in reverse and that kind of uh, shows up some of our shadows and things like that. And then if we want to, we can go into the matte generation and deal with some of these other um, other settings a little bit. If I, if I dial back on the transparency, we see that gets rid of um, some of these. These are actually green stripes in my shirt. Uh, it wasn't a good uh, good dressing day that day. So I can get rid of some of those and it makes these shadows a little bit uh, less. I can dial back on the shadows, get rid of some of that other. And you can just play around with these based on your, um, based on your particular um, issues that you find in, in your green screen. Uh, pedestal deals with the black control. So I can also kind of dial, in this case, dial it up a little bit and get a little bit better picture. And when I'm kind of satisfied with how the contrast is looking, I get out of the alpha channel and go back to the composite channel. And that's pretty much it. Um, let's play it and see what this, see what this looks like. Now let me show you a, a little better way to select your background in a green screen object when you've got uh, when you've got a stationary object that's not moving across the frame. So uh, let's move across here and about this point where a uh, guy with the big belly moves into the field of view, I'm going to have a green screen uh, thing that comes in here of me kind of saying, no, don't do that. And so about this point, I've got a subclip already made and there it is, subclip. Drag this on and make a new clip here. Okay, so this one will work uh, more like the green screen videos we shot in class last week, except that you're not even going to be seeing in yours these, uh, these edge pieces. What I want to do here is make my selection just around this area so that when I go to sample the green color it's only sampling from a fairly consistent area and I don't have this really dark part here for it to work with the really light part here I don't have the light and things like that I'm just kind of constraining it to an area where the color is much more consistent and I should get a better selection to do that instead of using the Ultra key, we'll use that in a minute, but first we're going to create a mask, and we do that through the opacity effect. So I click here on opacity, and then I'm going to use my Bezier pen tool. Click on that, and notice it created a mask, uh, a mask path. And so what I'll do is I'm going to make an outline of, around myself, laying down points, I can click and drag and use these as like a Bezier tool if I want to. And I want to make sure I don't go beyond or don't go inside of a path where, say, my hand is going to move or my arms are going to move. I want, to, I want the, uh, uh, the circle or the path that I'm going to make to uh, completely cover, to, to completely have green around it, not any of my body. Okay, and then we can go back over and finish that one here. Let me see if I can drag this down just a bit, and that's good enough. Okay. Now we can see that it's already created the mask, and so most of the track under directly underneath is visible, but we still have the green background. So now we go to our Ultra key. So with our clip highlighted, uh, selected, we use our Ultra key, 
and now add that effect onto the clip. Now let's scroll down until we find there's our ultra key. And so start with the composite for the output. That's kind of your default. And now we'll select our color and, and again try to get kind of a medium value in here. And we should get a pretty good selection. And that's pretty good. Uh, if I want, again, I can go with a um, default or if I want to go with a little bit more aggressive, that gets rid of some of that shadow. Um, and I still have the matte generation uh, values that I can, can work with a little bit more if I want to. But you, but you see you get a better first selection by constraining the area from which you sample. And that's kind of the point I, I wanted you to see there. Okay, so now let's go ahead and see what that looks like. go. Okay, that's an introduction to working with green screen effects. Let's see what this looks like. Thanks for watching.